Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack one, pick one. Ooh, this is a nice one. Both Ignis Inspiration and Multiple Choice are great first picks. Gonna go with the Multiple Choice here. But uh, both are reasonable. And then we can hope to wheel maybe a Prismari Campus. Maybe Negates. Negates, you know, it's not a card I love to play in Limited, but it is better in this set than it is in other Limited environments, just because there are so many expensive instants and sorceries. Bookworm also a fun one to build around. Second pack. It might be unconventional, but I'm kind of looking at this Professor of Symbology. And then, who knows, we can end up in some sort of Azorius deck. I have seen some deck lists floating around of people trying Azorius in draft. Or we could just take a Burying Books and make it a little simpler. Barry is definitely the safer pick. Symbology is kind of the experimental pick. Let's see if we can make Azorius work. Yeah, you know, let's try something new. Third pack. Well, there's no great mono blue or mono white card, sadly. Could take the exponential growth, try and get all the unblockable and flank creatures. Could just take Aether Helix, which we can splash as well. I do like Aether Helix quite a bit against large tokens. Growth is a bit gimmicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes you get two for one. Well, I guess we're getting pushed more towards green with maybe a field trip or decisive denial. No real reason to take one of the black cards, I don't think. So between field trip and denial. They're both good. Field Trip makes me feel better when I cast it as opposed to Denial, although there are definitely moments where Denial can feel great. I don't know, I'll go with the Field Trip. Next. Yeah, it looks like we're just gonna end up in a pretty traditional Quandrix deck. Can take the Witherbloom Pledge Mage, which we can still cast. And then... You know. We'll uh, end up blue-green. That's fine. I mean, we took the Professor as the most individually powerful card in the pack in case we could make an experimental blue-white deck or in case blue got cut off and we could pivot into a white deck. Still fine. Um, could have been a berry in books. I'm not gonna sit and be sad about it here. But Pledge Mage has been a pretty good performer in these decks, especially when we can ramp into it with cards like Field Trip. Love me an Overgrown Arch. Steady Stream of Life gain, early blocker in decks that don't always have a lot of 2-drops. Vortex Runner could also be fun, especially if we wheel that uh, exponential growth. Another Pledge Mage would be fine. But uh, yeah, looking at our curve, don't have any 2-drops if we're in the blue-green. Also good synergy with Aether Helix, sometimes you don't have a target in the graveyard to get back. And then Arch you can always sacrifice, so you can cast the Helix in the first place. Opt also would have been fine. Ooh, Karok Wrangler. It's pretty late. So green's wide open. And we'll take advantage. Could take Infuse in case we end up black green. Could take Masterpiece in case we splash red. Uh, probably not going to play Archivist. Yeah, don't think I'm going to need to splash Masterpiece and maybe we pivot into black and splash the blue for... Helix a multiple choice. Probably doesn't matter too much. We did wheel the negate and the Prismari Campus. Even though I just took the infuse over Masterpiece, I could see myself potentially splashing red. Even though negates again a fine playable. Colony I like. Seeing some black-white cards late as well. Mm, sometimes we want a big play. Alright. Not a huge fan of the Soothsayer. The fact that the learn mechanic 
just gives you so many ways of spending your mana in the late game, means you don't often have time to loot, even though traditionally these are fine cards unlimited. And crash through could be fine if we, or charge through could be fine if we end up with more um, magecraft synergies like Wrangler. Alright, we wield a masterpiece. We'll take that. So blue, green, splash red might be the way to go. As we open Quandrix Cultivator, man, Mage Duel and Fractal Summoning are both very high picks as well for our deck. But Cultivator is just such a, a beating if you can play it early and ramp into all sorts of fun things like multiple choice and masterpiece. But yeah, Mage Duel, Summoning would be very close behind and between Summoning and Duel, it's also close. The first Fractal Summoning is very important, so I might lean towards the Summoning, but these are all great. Another Arch is nice, although Quandrix Apprentice, if it gets to go off, is incredible too. I uh, wouldn't mind Elemental Summoning as another great lesson. But haven't had the chance to play Apprentice much in Limited, but it's usually quite good. That's a pretty late Environmental Sciences, I'm saying third pick, how times have changed. But yeah, we'll grab it. Uh, Eureka Moments, Drake, Trickster, all playable. But I think Sciences is more important. Especially if we're going to splash a third color. And then now either Cram Session or Campus. So how many ways to learn do we have so far? We've got the Arch, we've got Field Trip. And that's it, so I wouldn't mind a Cram Session. Although I also wouldn't mind the Quandrix Campus. Yeah, I'll go with a Cram Session. And then how about Mentor's Guidance? Great with our Wrangler specifically. We might end up with a few Quandrix Plunge Mages, for instance. Also good with the Apprentice. Colony would be a nice one to get later too. Snarl. Could help a splash, although it's probably worse than a Prismari Campus, if we're being honest. Ooh, a Rutha. That's a late Rutha, 6-pick. Definitely happy to splash her. Invocation could also be serviceable, but... Rutha it is. This is a bomb. Not a huge fan of the Amplomancer, although it's a fine filler to drop. I uh, do have a bit of synergy with Arch and Honor Troll, but generally speaking, it's more of a Wither Bloom card, so maybe the commons for fixing. And then could play a Mathematician as a filler 3 drop. Biograph gets better if we have something like Mathematician in the deck. Didn't see myself splashing blank yet. Could always take Transformation as a lesson as well. But, you know, don't want to end up short on playables. Did not wheel the cards we were hoping for. Okay, maybe main deck a Test of Talents. It's kind of like a poor man's negate. Uh, not a huge fan of Aerialist, but it's filler. How many God's Willings do I have? I guess I've got four. Alright, Eureka Moment Wheel, that's nice. And yeah, I'll take a Curate. Now with double Curate, we also want to be on the lookout for Serpentine Curve, especially with Rutha to potentially double it. Right, last pack, we're looking good, could use a bit of removal, you know, had to pass up on that mage duel and can maybe use some red removal we can splash. And oof, this pack delivers, heated bait would be great, but I don't think we can pass up on pugilist. 3 mana 3-3 three, three trampler that randomly turns into an 8-8. Eight, eight. Pledge mage would also be great, but pugilist it is. 
Could also use a few more lessons, especially a summoning, fractal summoning. We need to still grab. I mean, I would love a growth spiral, but can't pass up on a second multiple choice. And then we can hope to wheel Colony, Drake, or Pop Quiz. Even the pass summoning would be fine. Yeah, just ramping into a big multiple choice is not a bad game plan. So this is more of a 5-drop. Hopefully we can cut Aerialists. And then, yeah, we're pretty short on Lessons and Learn. Gotta pick up Mage Duel. Second Science is not as important as the first. Rarely need two of them in one game. But Mage Duel's perfect. Uh, not gonna splash for Flunk. Invocation could be an extra finisher. Or I could grab a Snow Day. Uh, snow Day can be good. This is probably not the best Snow Day deck since we're not applying a ton of pressure. So I don't hate the Invocation as something we can also double with Ruthan to give us more win conditions. Because that's kind of my concern right now. Is that we don't have a lot of ways to close out the game. Could definitely wield the Invocation potentially. I don't know, we'll, we'll go for it. And then I'll take my Prophecy to have a few more lessons. Colony's fine. Double red on Pigment Storm is a bit difficult. Ooh, hello. Oh man, this pack is... This pack is awesome. Annihilation would be great. Cultivate, Cram Session and Bookworm. I think I gotta go for the Worm. Even Zephyr Boots is kind of an option too. Yeah, I mean, Cultivate is awesome. But we do have, you know, some ramp cards like Apprentice to hit our land drops, and we're not splashing that many red cards. Plus we have Sciences for fixing too. And then now a uh, Prismari Campus over a second Masterpiece is fine, now that we picked up some more top-end cards. Culmination of Study is just not a very good card. Um, do I need a second Archway Commons? Probably not. But also don't see myself playing any of these other cards. I'll grab it just in case. Another colony is fine. Alright, so... Missing that... Uh, burying books in the second pick of the draft a little bit since we're light on interaction. But so it goes. Explosive Welcome, yeah. Also would have been reasonable as something expensive. And as more interaction. We do have double multiple choice, so that's a bit of interaction too. So, didn't really get there in terms of learn and lessons. We have three ways to learn. And I only have the two lessons really, so a bit disappointing there. So this deck's not going to be as good as it could have been. Because that's often the kind of deciding factor if you're playing against other good decks that are a good mix of lands and spells. It's often who has the better package of learn and lessons to kind of push it over the top. And while our main deck is, you know, totally fine, we don't really have those lessons to necessarily support our deck in the late game. No Fractal Summoning is a pretty big loss. But let's try and make the best of it. Eh, Test of Talents can probably go. Yeah, so we're light on removal. How do we win the game? Go over the top with card like Wrangler. Invocation Masterpiece with Rutha, Bookworm, and then Multiple Choice, just a good tempo play as well. And then I need to make three cuts, 
can probably cut a archway commons, leaving me with one mountain, two campus commons, plus sciences for the red splash should be plenty. Might not even need the archway commons. I don't have any lessons I can splash with commons, so that's not a reason to include it. Yeah, let's cut it. Because we do have a lot of two drops we want to cast. And then this is 15 lands. So let's say we add 8 blue, 3 reds, 8 green. So we need to make 3 cuts. This is more of a 5 drop. And this is sort of what our curve looks like when we actually play out the games. Probably don't need to charge through all that much. If we want a random cantrip, we're probably better off with curates, even though it's a little bit more expensive. Although, trample could be nice with leyline invocation. I guess there's also the Rutha arguments, so the cheaper the cantrip, the easier it is to double. Alright, let, let's play charge over the second curate then. Happy with the two drops. Happy with the threes. Mathematician's not amazing, but it does help us buy more time to set up our big plays, which we do have a decent number of. Aerialists gives us an evasive win condition. I don't think that's going to get there all by itself, because we don't have any other flyers. So that doesn't seem like a great game plan. We kind of have to just outmuscle the opponent on the ground. I'm a little bit stacked at five. So I could see cutting the with a bloom pledge mage, even though the card's great. Yeah, I think the candidates are charged through. Pledge mage. Mathematician. Maybe curates. Yeah, those are probably the cards I would consider cutting. Pledge Mage is nice with Helix, since we can't Helix back Invocation or Masterpiece, so having something beefy to get back is nice. So I'm leaning towards keeping the Pledge Mage. We'll run this. And then the Mana Base looks good. Could even go 9 Forests. Yeah, we really don't have a ton of blue, do we? Alright, let's go down to 5 and then plus 2 is 7. Plus we still have the sciences. Right, this looks good. Well, hopefully we don't have to cast multiple choice for two. But it is an option. Because we really need to keep hitting our land drops. And next turn we can multiple choice for four. Apprentice, mm, it's fine. It's just gonna be a while before I can trigger it. So I think I would rather just hit my land drop naturally. Choose a player. Could also pick up our own cultivator, I suppose. But if I bounce their creature now, Pugilist gets to smash. I think that's still better. So opponent chose to bounce Mathematician, which will grow the Fractal, but now they don't have any good blocks. Eh, they're gonna chump instead. So opponent's pretty far behind on board here. 
Can maybe sack Arch to be able to cast Helix. And we're just two lands away from beefing up our creatures. Opponent just gonna try and hit their land drop here. And they do. Alright, so let's think through our turn. If we attack with everyone, they might be inclined to double block Pugilist, but then they would take 9, and it enables my Aether Helix to get back Pugilist, so I think that's totally fine. If I play Arch, I can sack it, leaving me 3 mana. Although the only lessons we have are Sciences and Prophecy, so that doesn't really help us out. I guess Sciences would help me cast Masterpiece. I think I just like Smashing and then potentially being able to cast Helix next turn. So, yeah, let's smash. Alright, that also works. Opponent takes six, trades and chumps. And then... Could Helix the letter replay Colony? Don't hate it. Hold on. Could even bounce their Archway Commons. Yeah, this is just mean. It's like we're playing land destruction here. Yeah, I forgot Helix could bounce lands as well. Rutha. Well, we can arch. What I was gonna do is arch, sacrifice, get sciences, gets us land 8. And uh, yeah, the opponent's just dead on board. Apprentice can find a land after we cram session, hopefully, and cram session can get sciences, so... This is kind of like a four land hands. And a four lander is pretty good with colony. Oh no. They bolted my apprentice. I get to play pugilist now. And then next turn we can double spell. Alright, opponent's not messing around. There was an argument for tap land and just a single colony so we can wrangle around five. Assistant get back Lightning Bolt, pretty good. We don't have to attack, we can just wait for the colonies to eventually grow. Get our sciences, hit our land drop. Yeah, trading for assistant feels pretty bad, so we'll wait. Helix is nice. So they still have their lightning bolts. I'll attack. Now I'm okay playing Wrangler. Otherwise I would have considered just invocationing. An encounter on Colony makes it big enough to block Assistant and Phoenix. Mage duel. 
All right. Yeah, it's a lot of removal here. Colony's almost big enough. And I can Helix back... Probably Pugilists. Or I can play Big Invocation. And then if I draw land, I can Helix back Pugilist and play it. It's probably better. So there are blue rats, splashing green, from the looks of it. Warden to get back Lightning Bolt once again. And there's land eight. So grows a colony. So I guess the concern is them getting back Mage Duel and finding the colony. I think I'm still happy bouncing the 4-4, four four, attacking with a 7-7, seven seven, and then playing a, an 8-8 eight eight Pugilist. So we've got some good pressure going. Colony stops their attacks unless they want to spend a turn removing it. But then they're still having to deal with Pugilist and our 7-7 on defense. Opponent's going to turtle up and it's Masterpiece, not a bad pickup. So what's their plan here? They can't sack Warden in our turn. So they must have drawn some instants. Who knows? But I think we're smashing. Do we even smash with Colony? Nah, Colony probably stays back. Could be a Burying Box. Uh, I mean, in which case, they can cast it either way for 5 mana. So, yeah, we'll attack. All right, fair enough. So, think Warden and... Let's say they have the minus four, minus so. Then we don't want to put Warden first, so it's, either way it's going to be second. And then I guess we put the Flyers and then the, the Warden. That way, even if they have the minus four, minus so, we still kill the Flyers at least. And then they get to keep Pledge Mage. Sure. That's fine. So hopefully they don't have a land. Otherwise, I can make a 5-5, five five, which beats our 4-4s. Four right, just a 4-4. Four four. That's great. Now we get to keep swinging. Put in trace for colony. Hmm, that's weird. And we can still scry end of turn. Alright, GG's. They must have drawn a Cultivate last turn instead of a land, when a land would have been so much better. Yeah, opponent got a little bit unlucky in the end there with how they drew their cards, but their early aggressive use of removal maybe came back to bite them a little bit. 
on the draw, fine hands. Flyer we can try to block. For now I'm happy to cast Field Trip and then play Pledge Mage next turn. And then do I need Sciences or Introduction? I guess I wouldn't mind an extra land drop. Sure it's close though. Because of course Introduction can always find lands as well. I'm gonna play Pledge Mage next turn and a turn after Colony plus I guess we have enough mana for introduction. If I draw another 2-drop, I can Sciences, Colony, and a 2-drop. And we do have a couple 2-drops in the deck. So Arch significantly stemming the bleeding here. give us a nice big blocker. If they kill it without exiling, we can helix it back if needed. And then colony can trade too. Play Colony Sciences, and then we could keep up Arches, Learn Ability, or I can just play Sciences or Tapland. I guess Sciences is fine. Get an Islands. They've got something, but it wasn't an Expel, I don't think. Still no real reason to attack with the Pledge Mage at this point. Village rights, okay. So had we attacked, they probably would have chumped and sacrificed. So currently sitting on six lands, but we can helix back colony if it trades. So I think I'm okay trading. Hmm, to Helix or not to Helix? I don't want to sacrifice my Arch. So the option is Helix by Colony Plate, Helix by Pledge Mage and Pass. I mean, the life gain from Pledge Mage is also kind of nice. And the opponent can keep paying life with Poets, or they're, otherwise they're just going to die to it. So probably go for Pledge Mage here. Oh. That's not what I meant to do, but I guess that was also an option. <laughs> Alright. Well, I didn't want to draw that land anyway. Maybe we accidentally made the right call. No more lands. Well, now we can play 4-4, four -four, I guess. Yeah, we were playing around Lash of Malice. Hmm. 
And there we go, some action. I think we're okay racing. Opponent's stuck on four lanes, so I want to apply a bit of pressure here. Could always sack Arch to get Prophecy, but the life gain's pretty nice. Do I scry? If I scry, I can't really cast any impactful spells, although drawing a land would be disaster. Alright, that's good. Yeah, probably okay to send everyone. They're probably gonna trade for Colony. Let's see what they learn. Alright, at least this guy tramples. Can always learn with our arch. Now that the game has shifted where we're the aggressor and don't need the life as much. But nope, opponent just throws in the towel. Yeah, Pugilist is a strong card. This ends fine. Blocked the eye twitch now. Get on the board. Ooh, Harmonize, that's a nice one. Land is good. And there's a time for Rutha. We're not really close to using our ability. So might be better off going for a Colony. Could learn with Arch to get Sciences, which I don't mind. See if Rutha dies. Ooh, a gnarled professor. That's a nice one too. Opponent's got some beefy creatures. And now they're attacking with Pledge Mage. Yeah, they seemed like they might have had a pump spell all the way back when they attacked with Colony. Especially Infuse would be bad if we triple block. So I can either take it or jump with a 1-1. I'll take it for now. OK, 
can copy Eureka moments. Which feels better than multiple choice. So we can maybe jump with Rutha, pick her back up. Yeah, they definitely have some pump spell. Question is which one? I think it's Infuse. So then we want to double block the Bayou Groff. Yeah, can't really take infinites. So we can play a worm next turn if we want to, and we grew the colony. But I'm gonna infuse now. Alright, at least now if the bookworm doesn't get answered, it blocks all the five powered creatures. And I have to imagine this is the play. We're in trouble if they can answer it. Uh oh. So do we play around big play or another infuse? I guess playing around big play is not a huge cost, we just block the biograph. Something like this, 10. Yeah, I think I'm happy with these blocks. At least we still trade for the Groff with a big play. Could block Professor instead of Groff, but that's worse in case of an Infuse. Alright, 10 the pests. Alright, so 10 mana available. Gotta get some bodies on the ground. So... If I multiple choice... 5 mana left. I could copy multiple choice with Rutha. We have to bounce 2 of their creatures, 2 tokens, and we get to make 2 4 fours. Colony can block Pledge Mage. Serpon loses two tokens. They're gonna have three lefts. And then Yeah, we're we're not that on board, but it's close. Ah, and they picked up Eye Twitch instead. I think land's still fine. I'm gonna learn again. Maybe they have a uh, necrotic fumes for colony. All right, they're just setting up. No attacks. All right. So I want to get the Pledge Mage in play to start gaining some life. So I can go Pledge Mage. Can't copy the Mage Duel with Rutha. But we can go Pledge Mage, another Colony, Field Trip, Mage Duel. Mm, 
And then who do we fight? Uh, their Pledge Mage or one of their evasive creatures. Although with double colony, we should be fine. Yeah, we'll kill their Pledge Mage. All right, we're holding on. Rutha can try and take over the game. Another fractal summoning, but we should be able to go over the top of the summonings here. 13 cards left. So I'm probably not in desperate need of playing Apprentice to get more lands. I can Rutha, copy Prophecy, start there. Do we even need to copy the Prophecy? Maybe that's not even needed. Still have some expensive instants and sorceries left. Which I might want to be able to cast right now or copy with Rutha next turn. Now let's copy. I don't think we need guidance, I'll keep invocation though. Cultivator. I probably don't need cultivator either. I haven't played a land yet. Oh, whoops. Somehow messed up my lands here. That's fine. Just play Rutha back. Okay. Bowen's got their own bookworm. Time for double invocation. Getting past these tokens is going to be problematic, so do we do want to start thinking about closing out the game as well? Yeah, let's send a bookworm, why not? And then end of turn we'll put back bookworm. Masterpiece we can copy. So we'll do that first before potentially trading away the Pledge Mage. Yeah, we need to get aggressive. So we're attacking first. Yeah, we could use the pugilist's backside as well to turn everything into a bookworm. That would be fun. But it feels like we've taken over the game now. Just have to tread carefully. Don't even think we want Apprentice because those triggers are annoying. Mm. 
opponent's crying, so they've got something they're digging towards. I guess the bookworm, maybe? We'll see. Ooh. Can we win this turn? So let's read this carefully. Choose target creature control. Each author creature control becomes a copy of it until end of turn. So if I can draw bookworm, so this is 8 plus 5 is 13. Um, 8, 5, 13, but I also need to draw it first, so that's not going to work. So we can set that up for next turn, though. So I think that's going to be our win condition. We know our opponent's drawing a bookworm, so it should be good to go. So how about a double multiple choice? Not afraid of decking. Alright, and our opponent already concedes. We were going to set up a pretty sweet finish here, but it wasn't necessary. Alrighty. Well, we got to 7 wins in the end. So can't complain, got our max value out of both drafts. So you got your max value as viewers as well. Let's crank some packs. Ah yes, can't wait to open those 20 gems. Ooh, Crankle with power. It's a fun one too, haven't had the pleasure to cast that one in draft. We'll take those wild cards. And last but not least. Alrighty. Well, that's just about going to wrap things up for me today. We'll be back with another Magic Arena stream as usual on Tuesday. But yeah, want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.